Good morning, December the 1st, 2014. This is CISG 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy. Today is day number 29 in the makeup week of the semester. That means it's week number 15. So let's get started. Good morning. Welcome back to this makeup class on December 1st. This is the very last week of the semester, the makeup week. So, without much ado, let me first take attendance and then we we'll go to the uh, sharing sections for today. Many groups would like to do the sharing, so I will devote the three sections today to three different groups so that you can do the in-class form bonus work and anyone who would like to participate in the discussions with the in-class forum you can use that participation as one incidence of your in-class participation score. That is very attractive, okay? So allow me to take attendance first, and then I'll pass to the first team. So, Halia, Prolia, Ada, uh, Ryan Wong, thank you. And then it's Jenny. Jenny is not here today. Jackie Wong. Jackie is not here today. Waipa, thank you. And then it's uh, Sihon, not here today. Michael, Bittritz, thank you. Uh, and then it's Fish, Fish is not here today. Angela, thank you. Uh, Erica, thank you. And then uh, Ruby, thank you. Uh, C, thank you. Elisa, thank you. Um, Lokka, thank you. Uh, Stephen, thank you. Terence, Terence, ex excuse, I think. Is it excuse? Okay. And then Winnie Earned, thank you. Uh, Tom, Tom is not here. Okay, uh, Tom is here now. Okay, thank you, but just in time. And then Dixon, thank you. Winnie Hall, not here. Okay, not here. Uh, Gillian, not here. Okay. the record. see. This is the first one, I think. Lockdowns, right? Are you doing what you do today? All right, you're the first one. And then the second one is Winnie Earned. Okay, so the third one is uh, Ada, right? Okay, so could I just pass the time to you now? To get yourself ready, lock me out and lock you in, and then I'll become the camera. Then, all right, 
Now make sure that after you have done your in-class bonus work, create a record of in-class bonus work in your learning portfolio. Put in everything there, your PowerPoint, your discussion detail, and the video link. Alright? I'm going to update all the video links today. Alright? So if you join the discussions, make sure you also remember today's is your uh, discussions in class participation with a record that is requested. Please come in. <coughs> Today our topic is information security. As other team have talked about information technology, we have changed our topic to this one. First, let's talk about what is information security. It's the theory and practice of defending data or information system against the unauthorized or unintended access, uh, the disruption, disruption, and tampering. And there are three main concepts that security professionals frequently refer to. That is uh, confidenti confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So confidentiality is the uh, assurance that information is not disclosed to individuals or systems that are not uh, authorized to receive it. Integrity is the assurance that Information cannot be modified by those who are not authorized to modify it, or that any or that any such modification will not be passed uh, undetected. Availability is the assurance that information is available when it's needed, and that mishap or mass loss uh, cannot affect the ability of systems to provide information when requested. So first, let's talk about our discussion. And now we are going to ask uh, several questions. And uh, please raise your hand. Yes. And the first one is, I regularly update my antivirus software. If you uh, have updated your antivirus software, please raise your hand. Uh, and then no, for those who didn't, please raise your hand also. And we can see that uh, there are more people who will update their antivirus software. And we can see it is, it is important for us to update <coughs> the antivirus software. And then the second question, and then the second is, I regularly back up my files. And for those who say yes, please raise your hand. Uh, how about no? And we can see that. And the proportion of the proportion of those who regularly back up their files and those who didn't are quite similar. Um, the third one is I seldom forward emails that ask me to send a warning message to others. Um, yes, for those who say yes, please raise your hand. And how about no? Let me, let me, um, uh, okay, you just raise your hand. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay, you can change the voice sound to never. Okay, can change to never. Uh, who will never forward emails that ask me to send a warning message to others? And uh, you can raise your hand for those who say yes. And uh, that means uh, the rest of you say no, right? 
Okay, and then the last is that I have a complicated password for my PC and also email account, which I will change it regularly. And to say yes, please raise your hand. And for those who say no, that means most of you will not change your password regularly. And can uh, can you just think of some consequence that and uh, if you did not change your password or protect your computer, can you think of any consequence? Uh, you can share your points. Do you have any idea? Hello, Amelia. I think change, change password regularly may make me confused. Okay, let me talk about if you're not doing the following action, and uh, have some situation will come. If you're not doing regular update of the antivirus software, uh, you will look off a regular update of antivirus software, and that is mal malicious code and virus attack, and the risk is desecration of software, data, and facilities. And if you are doing backup of files regularly, <coughs> You will look up backup facilities and processes, and the flag is failure of communication services and technical failures, and the risk is uh, destruction of data and facilities. And if you're doing a you know certain forwarding email that asks me to give for all more to others, you will link up power uh, pool of hosts and email spam. And the risk is wasting time in reading, wasting uh, wasting network bandwidth, uh, denial of service. <coughs> the last is, uh, if not do, if you not having a comp complicated uh, password for my PC and email account and checking it regularly, you will link off a uh, sufficient access security, and the flag is a normalized data access, a normalized. Uh, dialing access and threat and flow. <coughs> the risk is loss and data, destruction of data and software, and others acting on behalf of you and acting unlawfully. And I'll pass to. Okay, so uh, here's. about how to protect ourselves. Maybe you should have some ideas or some points, some tips. So, uh, we have some ideas for these questions. You want to share or what? How to protect ourselves when uh, we are using the internet or, or so that you can you can protect your file, file and uh, we should not use the public Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm CD. <laughs> I'm Steve and I think um, we should set up our privacy level in our internet. For example, um, Facebook and we can set up the privacy level and that's all. I want to upload something private. 
So, anybody want to share? No. So, okay. Here is a video. Not many of us will leave our houses or cars unlocked, or leave valuables unattended. But when it comes to information, we tend to be less careful. Just look at the phone hacking scandal. Many of the victims left their passwords set to the factory default setting of password, which made it easy for hackers. It shows that we need to be more careful with information about ourselves and that which we handle for others. So this is what you need to know about information security. Most of us, whether at home or at work, have a huge amount of data on computers, smartphones, storage devices, tablets and on paper. There's so much of it we can become complacent, perhaps mixing everyday documents with sensitive information, then treating them as if they were all just ordinary files with nothing important on them. But what if these files got into the wrong hands? Embarrassment? Inconvenience? Public scandal and dismissal? A lot of information security is about being more aware of the risks we're taking. Personal information may seem unimportant to you, but to a criminal it can be the key that opens doors. We need passwords for everything these days. This is Laura, and she uses them a lot. This one looks pretty secure, and she knows not to write it down. But here's the thing. She uses the same passwords for lots of different websites. The same one for her social media, as her online auction account, her bank, and her amazing .com account. And for some site she had to register for. Criminals capture usernames, passwords, and personal information from bogus sites. It's one of the most common ways that criminals get our details. So using secure passwords is important, but it's also important to use different ones. And passwords are just the first line of defense. For important information, encryption makes it almost impossible for criminals to use the data even if they do get through to it. That's why people often encrypt data on laptops or USB memory sticks. Encryption is also used to make data transfer through the internet more secure. Websites that are using encryption have an HTTPS address and a padlock symbol. Look for this if you're buying something or using a bank account or getting a quote for insurance any time when personal details and information are involved. But what about information on paper? We can be just as careless with written or printed documents. You may have heard of government officials with confidential documents on display, walking past photographers, or putting correspondence in public litter bins. It seems so obvious, but have you ever left any documents with confidential information lying around? In a briefcase, on a desk, or on a computer monitor where someone could see it, copy it, or print it off? Ever hit reply to all on an email and not check who it was going to? It might just be embarrassing. But it could be worse. A lot worse. Sometimes, though, it's more a case of stopping others gaining access. You wouldn't let a stranger follow you in through your front door. So why do people do this in secure areas of work? It's called tailgating. It might be a little embarrassing to say no or ask for ID, but look what happened in this case. An imposter went into a bank, posing as an IT person come to fix a computer. Instead, he installed a small piece of software onto the system which allowed hackers to see what was being typed on the bank's computer and use this information to transfer money from the bank to their own accounts. Criminals tried to do something similar on Laura's computer at home by trying to install what's called malware. Fortunately, she had an antivirus and protection software up to date and it stopped the hackers before they did any damage. Credit and debit cards are prime targets for criminals. Some clone them, while others watch over your shoulder as you enter your PIN code before stealing your card and using it. Look out for these so-called shoulder surfers and make sure they can't see your pin as you enter it. Organised gangs of criminals are stealing information at such a rate that the cost of a credit card number and bank account details is about the same as the price of a cup of coffee. Criminals are always looking for new ways to get our information and use it for profit. Here are three things that may help to make it harder for them. 
The first is to be more aware of what information you have, how important it is, and how secure it is. Second is to assess what could happen if you lost it or it got into the wrong hands. And third, make sure you have adequate precautions in place to protect it. Although it may be difficult for us to see the value of the information we handle every day, we need to get into the habit of protecting our own and others' information in the same way as we look after our valuables and the things we care about. Okay, so uh, here, this is some points, some fields we want to share after this video. Uh, we should set up a special password and and uh, it, you know something unique. Uh, people love to set their password as their uh, the date of birth or their name, their phone number. But it's some information that is uh, that are so easy to get, and they love to use the same password for every account. This is a bit dangerous because if they know one of your accounts, they can get access to an other one, all of your accounts. So, uh, yeah. And uh, other one is about encryption. Uh, uh, we we always use the Wi-Fi in the public area. So. Um, Maybe the one who sit next to you, they, uh, he is a hacker. Maybe he can so easily to get access to your computer. So uh, if we use some uh, website that is secured, uh, then uh, that would be a big deal. Uh, and uh, the third one is about antivirus software. We should install the software because uh, most of us would download something from the internet and uh, some files we uh, we bring we or maybe from the USB or some hardware, some hard drive uh, is uh, dangerous because it may have some virus so uh, if we have uh, software like this, it could uh, we would know whether it is safe or not. And we should also be aware of the people around us because uh, just like the USB, maybe someone around you, they want to steal it. So we should be more careful. Okay, we thank you for this team's uh, sharing of information and the con and the, and the in class forum produced. So may I invite the next team? Uh, the next team it's uh, Winnie's team. Okay. Not many of us will leave up. Everybody and I'm Team Five, and today today our topic is decryption. And what is decryption? Uh, decryption is the process of scrambling a message so that uh, only the extended uh, recipient can read it. And and.
and the actual crypto, crypto, uh, cryptographic uh, process is general, general, generally and uh, communicated mathematical formulation. Uh, and there is some example of equation. At first, every letter would uh, writing as a uh, less a uh, list letter and a script code and for example save so that John or James Watson uh, the meaning is save John Watson which calls shout out to save John and there is video about that it's okay just copy the name and search it again Copy the name of the video. This is a private video because this video is inappropriate in the world. Oh, I, okay. I upload as a uh, provide a pro private video. Yeah, okay.
thank you for watching. We just want to let you know how Sherlock can practice an uh, inscription called a uh, skip code, which is here. Give a message from Mary is safe. Safe, John. And the last part is what? And the next one yes. here? Yes. Uh, safe, John. See? It is a poem from Bible. Save John Watson and other work is useless. Then here is the place where John was there. Okay. Now we are going to create another video about inscription, how it works. This is Alice. She is going to show us how to use an email privacy program. First, she makes a lock, a key, and a password to protect the key. Alice puts her key in a safe and protects it with a password. She puts her lock in the lockbox. Now Alice can encrypt her documents so that only she can read them. Alice's friends would like to be able to send her private messages. To do that, they need copies of Alice's lock. Alice sends them copies of her lock, and they put them in their lock boxes. Bob, Charlotte, Daisy, and Eric now send private messages to Alice. Bob encrypts his private message with Alice's lock and sends it to her. When Alice receives his mail, she opens the safe with her password, takes the key out, and unlocks the mail. Alice does the same with a private message from Charlotte. Bob, Charlotte, Daisy, and Eric send their locks to Alice. Now Alice can send private messages to four friends. She encrypts a message with Bob's lock and sends it to Bob. Bob uses his key to unlock the message. Alice uses Daisy's lock to encrypt the message for Daisy and sends it. To make it easy for others to send their private messages, Alice sends her lock to the server. Now everyone can get Alice's lock from the server and write her private messages. And here is how a lock really looks. And here's how an encrypted message looks. Congratulations, you have successfully completed the encryption tutorial and are now ready to protect your privacy. Just like how could how can you uh, make a password to protect your fire? Please turn on the light. <coughs> Have you ever write a letter with the next letter? Just like I love you, write to. You. Yeah.
have any opinion, any idea? to create an encryption by yourself and you can tell your friends that they can read your message. is a very lazy way for me. Uh, for example, I also play basketball with friends. So I also, in my Facebook, I will, add, uh, I will have a message, send a message for my friends. Um, I also will send a message, go to play basketball. Did you? Uh, <laughs> and that, but I'm too lazy to enter the, the word, so I just type from uh, yes. G, uh, go G, G T P B. Just my friend know what I want to say is go to pay back people. Uh, uh, for years how to uh put that our message because the sentence uh, uh, the other the other one you cannot understand the message. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, the next question is. Okay, and the uh, next question is, do you think equations can protect your data completely? Blue. Thank you. I think we can, I think the equation can protect our data completely if we keep our past, keep the key as a secret and don't share it to everyone. Okay, thank you. I think the decryption can protect our data completely by okay. if we keep it a secret. Okay, thank you. think encryption can protect your data completely because if you if you set the password from your phone and it is not mean that you, your phone and uh, others can others can not to use because when you type your phone you, you type your password I can take a look and no uh, and now I, uh, if, if, if you are not here I can use your phone and, and view that <laughs> what it is illegal. Okay. For conclusion, for our group, uh, we have given two examples. One is the read, write a letter as the next letter, or we can do what as Elisa said, use A to use one to represent A and etc. And for the question two, in my opinion, I think the 
encryption cannot protect our data completely because nothing is perfect and someone may be just like Sherlock, uh, as intelligent as Sherlock, she can, he can read your message. So, but this is a kind of protection of, of our life so we can do it, do it better than nothing, right? So try to protect yourself and get creative. You can create many encryption by yourself to protect it. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much for this team. You know, this team is very hardworking. Every time I could see them coming up with new proposals, ideas. So, and then may I invite the last team for today, Ada, Jenny, and Angela. Okay. using Wi-Fi to connect the internet, but we can also we can use the Wi-Fi to connect the other machine. For example, your Sunday <laughs> camera. You can use uh, your camera, use your Wi-Fi to connect your computer to easy to take your 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 picture.
convenience uh, because we can connect, we can use Wi-Fi to connect at the internet easily, and we can search more information online to do our project. We don't need the cable, the LAN cable to connect computer and the insert, right? Uh, I think people can use Wi-Fi easily to connect the internet and get the information for important. maybe food shop uh, it can attract customers uh, for example there is there are two restaurants and one with Wi-Fi and another don't have and um, people may choose the one with Wi-Fi because uh, we can use the Wi-Fi free and then uh, and we can also eat The hacker used the uh, security Wi-Fi to steal the people email password. Mm -hmm. They can, they can, they can let people know the people information, personal information. Uh, which way? Which way can we use to protect our Wi-Fi? Uh, we, we will play the video. Uh, let me have um, let's some, idea. some idea about this question. Most of us use, use Wi-Fi to connect to the web. Wi-Fi is a wireless connection that links our devices, like desktops, tablets, smartphones, and laptops to the internet. When you're using Wi-Fi, you're sending or receiving information over a wireless network. When that information, like emails, bank account info, and even passwords is in transit over an unsecured network, it is susceptible to being intercepted by anyone within range of the wireless signal. So, it is important to know how to keep that information and your devices safe when connecting wirelessly. Protecting our information on the web can be as important as protecting our valuables at home. Just like most of us keep our homes safe by locking our doors, 
We recommend using strong locks for your information on the web. If you're running a Wi-Fi network at your home or business, you can help keep yourself and your visitors safe online by securing your network. But just as some locks are stronger than others, not all Wi-Fi security is created equal. The oldest standard for secure networks is called WEP, and it's a pretty weak lock. WEP security might stop a casual criminal, but it's actually not that hard to break. Fortunately, there are much better security modes available. WPA is good, but WPA2 is best. Any device with a Wi-Fi trademark sold since 2006 is required to support WPA2, and older equipment can generally be upgraded. We strongly recommend you use WPA2. WPA2 works with a password. It's important that you choose a unique, long mix of numbers, letters, and symbols so others can't easily guess it. If you're in a private space like your home, it's okay to write this password down so you remember it. Keep it somewhere safe so you don't lose it. But be smart, and don't make this the same password you use for your personal stuff. A quick note. While you're securing your network, you may see two options for security, personal and enterprise. Enterprise is the equivalent of a fancy badge system with a unique ID for each person, and you need IT help to set it up. If you use a regular metal key on the front door of your home or business, then personal WPA2 is fine for you. Now that you've secured your network, you should also secure access to your wireless router, the machine that connects Wi-Fi to the network. They come with the simple default password that many online criminals may already know, or no password at all. So we strongly recommend you change the password on your wireless router. This will prevent someone from gaining access to your router, which might allow them to change your network security settings. Keep this password to yourself. You should set up a different password to protect your router from the one used for your network. For help securing your wireless network and router, just search for the model number of your base station or router. In many cases, the info is available online. Otherwise, contact your internet service provider or the company that manufactured the router for instructions. So to recap, Wi-Fi is really convenient. We urge you to secure it with WPA2, a strong password, and to also set a password on your router. Now that you know how to set up your own secure Wi-Fi, we wish you happy browsing. For more advice on how to protect yourself and your family online, check out google.com slash good to know. When you the when, when you did use your your Wi-Fi, you can turn off the power of your Wi-Fi, and others can cannot connect it. tips for wireless home network security. Uh, like you can change the password or username and turn on the WPA encryption um, or do not auto-connect to open Wi-Fi network or turn off the network during extended period of non-use.
what you say and the EV can use the Wi-Fi go that is very very convenient. Uh, yeah, so us and um, you can use Wi-Fi to send the go for but although there have many benefits of Wi-Fi, uh, it also have the risk of Wi-Fi and we must know different ways to protect protect our Wi-Fi such as these 10 tips and um, you can set up your password longer and different so that people cannot steal your Wi-Fi okay that's Thank you. Thank you very much. We thank you for the three ladies who have done a very good job to help us understand more about virus. High five. Well, uh, I very much enjoyed the three teams in class forum and thank you very much for your good work. Now, kindly be reminded that you need to individually, okay, you need to set up an in class bonus work link in your personal portfolio to indicate your work done here. For example, you've done several in-class forums. You may include several links over there. And your in-class participations are very important. The only reason why we are still doing things like this is because these are good opportunity for you to keep a good record to earn the extra credit you need, okay? If you do not grab this chance, uh, it's your personal uh, preference. I do not think it's in, uh, it's uh, a compulsory to do that. All right, now we have one more class this first day. And so uh, if your team have not done in-class forum, you still have a chance to sign up uh, in using last week's uh, Q&A online because I have not set up this week's Q&A online yet. But uh, using last week's Q&A online, and if you see this week's Q&A online being set up by tomorrow, you still can use it. Okay, but um, I hope you now should also take into account the score you earned already. All right. Now I'm just one block away to get finished your midterm, and then I will return to give you a grade on your learning contract free collaboration screen. Individually, you will get a score. Okay. I do not give a, a score for all the members. But I will give a score for individual member by looking into the work you did. Okay. So you can expect that um, I should finish grading your block by tomorrow, and you should see the score on your wiki uh, also by Wednesday, all right? And then if you've already finished your learning portfolio or in the process of finishing it, you can send me a note, okay, I can finish grading your learning portfolio first, and you can also see the score, all right? This is very important. Um, normally, I would not set up specific submission link for your learning portfolio item. You know that you have four silos to do, right? And for each silo, the three important elements is my interpretation of the silo, my learning artifacts, and my reflection. I would go into your learning portfolio, look at each silo, and look for information on each one of this. And normally, if you prepare plan A, you will get 20% or 100% for your learning portfolio, and for each of the four sign nodes, it's five points, okay? If you prefer plan B, for each of the sign nodes, it's seven point five points, okay? And for each sign node, I will give one according to my interpretations, my learning artifacts, and to my reflections, okay? And what kind of artifact are you going to provide? As in my last week's teacher's message, I expect that you need to create um, a journal for each silo, okay, using what you have done, linked with other artifacts, um, a block for each silo, a PowerPoint for each silo, and a simple digital story for each silo, okay? I do not mean these are compulsory items, but these are the basic items which I'm looking for. And each of these items requires of you to think through how you're going to or how you can accomplish the silo, okay? So I enjoy helping you through the semesters of learning, and I hope you enjoy the learning process. And I want to repeat, it's quite different from other classes where you normally have a teacher going through each class.
class or with a lecture, all right, and using a couple of basic approach and giving you homework or tests or final exam. In this class, all the intonations you need to understand a specific topic, it's already in the website. Now it's you who's going to navigate your website and you pick up resources of your own. And when I look at your in-class form here, and you can also witness for yourself, your fellow students have done good work in selecting a topic, providing you information on that topic, asking good questions, and helping you to think about a topic. These are very valuable experience and also important competency you need to build into your college education. Because now is a topic in this course. Later is a topic in any course. You need to go through a similar process. John generally put in extra points, observations, interpretations, and application. Share that with your learning partner or with your professors. Ask for feedback and ask for enhancement work that could help you understand better, not only in the form of report, not only in the form of project, but not only in the form of mini research exercise. And then you need to create PowerPoint of what you did. And then you might want to give a presentation. And if you do not do real-time presentation, you need to create a digital story of the learning. And these are very valuable experience that is applicable and useful in every other course. And if you know how to grab them and put it in your learning portfolio, like a Mahara, you can retain them forever, okay? So when you do a course, make sure you understand these are very valuable evidence of the learning. And then not just the grade, okay? So I hope you understand the importance of this kind of GE format of learning. It's the kind of experience you need to carry through not just the four years of your college study, but in your work, real world work, okay? So I think I'm going to stop right here today. So um, but I will be here definitely until 11.30 to answer questions. If you have other makeup classes, you need to go, you're free to go, okay? But that's it for today, CISG 113, section one, information security and privacy. And today, date number 29, the first of two makeup classes in the week number 15 of the semester and this is also the last week of this semester until this first day stay in tune